All right, well, I am here again at the Blister Summit with Joe Johnson from Solomon. And I feel like every time you're here, we have a lot to cover. And that's once again, the case this year. Uh, I think for starters, um, maybe be easy into things with, well, one of the highest, higher profile skis of this season, the one behind you. Can you tell us, maybe start with the backstory of the new QSTX? For sure. Uh, we're super excited about adding the QSTX to the overall QSC family lineup this year. Um, I think the way that we like to look at it is we're kind of creating this laboratory of skis on the high end of the QST collection mm -hmm. that will then serve to inform the rest of that collection, the 92, the 98, the 106, as we move forward, not only into 24, but 25 mm -hmm. and beyond. So, you know, we already have the Echo that launched this year. Um, a lot of Blister members are big fans of that touring specific ski. Mm -hmm. um, we have the QST Blank, which has been around for three years. Again, a great ski, more of like an all mountain charger. Um, super versatile, still at a 112 underfoot waist. Mm -hmm. um, but with the QSTX, the idea was to create um, a more floaty, um, pivoty, versatile, like super playful powder ski. That's something that we got a lot of feedback from our athletes on. They want that like ski that they can pop, pivot, like have a lot of fun in deep snow, in the steeps, that sort of thing. And so that's how the idea behind the QSTX was born. If you're looking for a little bit of context um, from a historical QST perspective, mm -hmm. um, it's more like a QST 118 mm -hmm. from a few years ago, as opposed to a QST blank. Gotcha. And so people are like, well, is, is it going to like overshadow the blank? And I, w I would propose that it won't. Mm -hmm. It'll actually complement the blank. Mm -hmm. And so while they are somewhat similar in waist width, the performance is completely different. Um, the construction takes little pieces from a, from again, the Echo, the Blank, and make it into something truly awesome and truly unique in our collection. So we take the Poplar Karuba wood core from the QSD Echo, so it has that lightweight wood core, mm -hmm. again, making it tour touring capable. Mm -hmm. um, but then at the same time, we put in the carbon and flax super light fibers that run tip to tail. We have the cork damplifier in the tip and tail, so mm -hmm. it like dampens that tip and tail, less chatter. Um, double sidewall underfoot, fully recycled ABS sidewalls, mm -hmm. which... Um, you can see on the, on the <laughs> side of the skis, like really cool graphic call out. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and again, it just makes a super fun ski, um, definitely more focused on the powder, but I, I would challenge blister members to take it out in any condition and see how it performs. Mm -hmm. How would you say, for people who do know the old QST 118 pretty well, how would you say it compares to that ski and also the QST blank? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of things to keep in mind um, when you're, when you're trying to make that comparison mm -hmm. between those two skis. Um, if you think back to the QST 118, one of the things that people loved about it was the rocker profile mm -hmm. and the tip shape. And I think when you look at the QSTX, which you can see behind me, um, people will recognize that. Yep. Like it has that pretty similar tip shape. The rocker profile is very similar. Mm -hmm. The construction is drastically different. Um, when you look at the QST blank, one of the things that people really enjoyed about it, and I think what opens it up to a wide variety of skiers, is the radius associated mm -hmm. to those lengths. I mean, you have an 18 meter radius and the 194, mm -hmm. which is pretty bonkers. Whereas when you get to the QSTX, um, in the 184, it's a 25 meter radius. Gotcha. So when you pair that with that rocker prof profile, you again like have a ski that can do a lot of different things, um, and I, and I think that again will lend itself to people noticing and experiencing the difference between the QSTX and the QST blank. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think it makes sense to transition into the binding that out at Solomon Booth, uh, pretty much every QSTX seems to be mounted with, mm -hmm. and one of the yeah another notable update for this season, what's the deal with the shift two? Yeah, I mean, the, the shift two, again, if you if you go back to the shift one, which we launched, I believe, six years mm -hmm. ago now, um, that was a binding that, for lack of a better word, kind of changed the game when it came to the, the ability to go backcountry touring, the ability to ride a resort, mm -hmm. the capability of using pins for the up, and the ability to use a true alpine binding for the down. Mm -hmm. um, that, the original shift um, not only changed how, how skiers approach performance, how they approach skiability, how they approach access to the backcountry, it also changed the game at the retail level mm -hmm. um, from how people sell bindings um, to how people 
sell bindings relative to price. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, that binding did a lot for this industry and we're super excited to kind of take it um, take it up a level, mm -hmm. if you will, with the shift to making some changes that, you know, I think it's important to know that um, that original shift was a seven year process of development. Uh -huh. That's not a short process. Yeah. The average ski boot, whatever, is a three year process in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so to think about a seven year process for that original one, um, and then people are like, oh, you haven't made any changes. It's like, well, it's been six years and we've been <laughs> listening, we've been hearing what consumers are saying, mm -hmm. working towards making those changes. And so when you look at the shift to, um, the most notice noticeable thing that people will see is the change in the wings. Mm -hmm. And so this year, it's we're calling it the XL wings. Okay. And essentially, it's just a better wrapping of the toe of the boot. Um, the material has not changed. It's still that carbon-infused PA mm -hmm. that was so unique in the binding side of the business. Um, but again, just a better wrapping there, and that allows better boot-to-binding performance and obviously translates to better ski performance in mm -hmm. the end. Um, also along the toe piece, you'll notice that the lever has probably changed a little bit. It's bigger, it's beefier. Um, there's been some small adjustments around the DIN window that allow that lever to be very safe and secure when you're pulling that up. Uh, the biggest change, especially you know, listening to what consumers have given us from a feedback perspective, mm -hmm. is not visible. Mm -hmm. um, but there is an aluminum, what we call power block, underneath the AFD right now. Mm -hmm. And again, that provides um, a lot of support, a lot of more lateral transmission. And it also makes that AFD super powerful and stable. Um, and also it's micrometric adjustment now. And that adjustment point has been shifted from the original one, which is on the side here, uh -huh. to underfoot here. Okay. And that gives you the ability to adjust when you're in the binding mm -hmm. and kind of feel like how that is changing. Mm -hmm. But again, that's probably the most significant change that mm -hmm. people will experience and feel within this binding. Um, the performance of the toe is definitely going to be improved. The heel stays predominantly the same. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a heel shape that um, people have grown to love. Um, and so there's been some small adjustments within the brake mechanism just mm -hmm. to make sure that it's secure, whether you're in walk mode or ski mode. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, a small adjustment on the height of the one lever for climbing, it's three millimeters higher, mm, gotcha. but not much going on there. And then it's a little bit easier to transition with your pole mm -hmm. um, between with going up in hike mode um, using that walk mechanism. Gotcha. So some, some tweaks there that are relatively small in the grand scheme of things when you're mm -hmm. talking about a binding that originally took seven years to develop, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, there are changes that need to happen and that consumers are definitely gonna appreciate. Mm -hmm. Sweet, well, yeah, I know we are all excited about the updates when we first heard about them. Like, basically just listed the only things I would have updated as well. So I'm excited to try it. Uh, and I think anyone who's paid attention to Solomon's binding lineup in general might have noticed uh, some new bindings that look a lot like the shift, but aren't a shift. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me a bit more about how this developing this binding has informed your process elsewhere in the lineup? For sure. I mean, if you look at you know, if, if consumers had the opportunity to see a complete binding wall that was just Solomon, which we hope happens at the retail <laughs> level, but um, you would notice a very similar kind of like triangular shape of all of our bindings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you go back a few years, the STH was one of the first ones that, done, ha, that did that. And mm -hmm. that binding has some longevity within the Solomon family. It's iconic. It always will be. Um, but with what we did with the shift has proved to inform where we've went on the binding front. Mm -hmm. Um, you'll notice the same shape, vertical toe spring style that's now in the Strive family of bindings, mm -hmm. which goes from a Strive 16MN down to 14MN, 14GW. Um, you'll notice that it's very similar to the actual toe shape of the MTN bindings. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, we're trying to create this consistency because not only is it a visual connection for the consumer to Solomon bindings, but it's also a performance feature. Mm -hmm. We know that that's the shape that works best and we wanna to continue to make that move across the rest of the binding family. Mm -hmm. And was there any particular trait or thing that that kind of silhouette allowed you to do that convinced you to kind of switch everything else? Like, was it a stack height thing? Was it a elasticity thing? Were there any specific elements that kind of informed that? I think it's all those, mm -hmm. right? Like the STH, um, one of the big things about that binding and one of the big things about the shift is that it's like class leading as far as elasticity mm -hmm. goes, 47 millimeters of elastic travel, which is pretty bonkers. Um, but at the same time, it's that vertical toe spring. Mm -hmm. That's the ticket. That's what sets all these bindings apart. We tried the horizontal toe spring with the warden in the past. Mm -hmm. We've moved away from that. Vertical toe spring is where it's at for performance. But to your point, elasticity because of the shape and the stack height, which again, 
from shift to strive, lowest stack height in the industry, which mm -hmm. leads to better boot to binding the ski performance. Cool. We just covered the shift to binding. What is new on the shift boot side of things? Yeah, I mean, bindings are great. They hold you to your skis, right? But you, we all know the old mantra, like you date your skis, you marry your boots. Mm -hmm. um, we're the number one boot brand in the world. And we always are looking to continue to evolve. Um, one spot where we did that in the past was with the S-Lab MTN. If mm -hmm. you go back, I don't even remember how many years, but that wow, original <laughs> blue yeah. S-Lab MTN um, kind of like set the standard for an actual 98 lasted free ride touring boot, the ability to walk, mm -hmm. 120 flex. It was awesome, it was amazing. Um, and then since that time, we've come out with the Shift Pro, which is a four buckle, 100 millimeter last boot. Mm -hmm. I've seen quite a few Blister members walking around this week in that boot, and that's great. Um, but we've been a long time coming with this boot, and we're super excited to have it back. So the Shift Alpha Boa 130 is a 98 millimeter last free ride touring boot. True 130 Flex, um, obviously the implementation of the new H1 Boa system, mm -hmm. working with Boa has been a super awesome experience. Um, I think like the one thing that you would notice by looking at it right off the bat is that we didn't just implement the BOA. Mm -hmm. um, we added what we're calling the XO belt, as mm -hmm. you can see right here. That's a, essentially a belt that helps pull that heel, pull your foot back into the heel pocket of the boot. Um, if you're skiing this boot for the first time, if you're touring or if you're skiing in the resort, um, you will instantly feel that pull back of the foot, which is what you want as a mm -hmm. skier. You want to be back in the boot, feel that performance. Um, for me personally, I always experience it best and I like appreciate it the most when you're touring actually. Mm -hmm. um, and that's awesome because it's paired with the Boa, which allows you to fine tune that. So that's great. Um, we have a new booster strap on here, the Energizer Race booster strap, uh, my custom 40 liner. The whole shell and liner are heat moldable through our custom shell HD process. Um, we have a reworked um, ski walk mechanism. You know, mm -hmm. we've always done the horizontal walk mm -hmm. mechanism as opposed to the vertical. It's kind of been our calling card, mm -hmm. but this has been completely reworked since that original S-Lab MTN. Mm -hmm. And then also there's the new free spine, um, which allows you essentially, like we don't have the demo tool here, but essentially that allows you to have more forward and aft range of motion and walk mode, mm -hmm. while also creating a stiffer downhill alpine feel and that true 130 flex when you're skiing. So um, the idea behind this is to create that boot that has the best of performance in a 130 flex downhill, but also allows you to have really great experience when touring in the backcountry with a 55 total degree range of motion in walk mode. Gotcha. I imagine, based on some of the features you just pointed out, that <coughs> was there some inspiration or maybe co-development with the <coughs> recent S-Lab MTN Summit boots? Yeah, I mean, the, the S-Lab MTN Summit is a very different boot. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, every boot project that we're doing is in some way, shape, or form informing a project that's coming later mm -hmm. um, down the road, whether it's a year, two years, three years. Mm -hmm. um, and so with the S-Lab MTN Summit, like we did a lot of trial and error around like plastics, how those work together, how we can save weight, the walk mode, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the S-Lab MTN Summit is great for what it's for. Yeah. Great range of motion and walk mode. Awesome, like wider, like touring specific toe box to it. Um, but again, like what we wanted to get back to was offering like a true free ride skiing feel, mm -hmm. which you don't get in the summit. Mm -hmm. There's a little give and take there. Um, and we wanted to make sure that in the Shift Alpha Boa, you had the best of both worlds for that skiing experience. Gotcha. So we have the Shift Alpha Boa 130 in front of us, flagship product what other models are gonna be in that Shift Alpha Boa series? Yeah, no, the, like you said, Alpha Boa 130 is at the top. Um, on the unisex side of things, you go from the 130 to a 120 to a 110. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the women's side, there's a 115 and a 95. Gotcha. Um, I think one thing I would say, and it's, it's a topic that's come up quite frequently at Blister this week mm -hmm. is, um, the size 22 mm -hmm. issue, not an issue, but the size 22 topic, mm -hmm. I guess is a better way to say it. Um, when it comes to Solomon, all of our highest end flex ratings on the unisex side, i.e. 130s, mm -hmm. whether it's in the Shift Alpha Boa, the S-Pro Alpha, S-Pro Super Boa, whatever, 
go come in a true 22, mm-hmm. true 22 shell, all the way up to a 29 or 30. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think like for all the ladies out there looking for the highest performance boot possible, just wanted to throw that out there. And that applies here with the yeah. Alpha Boa. Yeah, yeah, I think when uh, that was first announced, uh, yeah, it makes, makes it a lot easier on our end because I we get that question all the time. Like, where can I buy a 22, 130 mm-hmm. flex boot? I'm like, well, there's several other options right there across sure. the brand. Well, sweet. Do you want to move on to the blue boot next to it? 100%. So yeah, we've got the S Pro Race 140 in front of us. We've talked about in the past, S Pro Alpha, S Pro mm-hmm. Super Boa. Uh, what is happening on the race side of things? Yeah, so I think it's important to note that despite its blue color, this is not like a technical World Cup race boot. Mm-hmm. That's not where we're going with this boot. I think what we're trying to do is tell a complete last story Gotcha. Um, within the Solomon brand. And so we haven't had anything that's consumer facing necessarily under a 98 mm-hmm. um, in quite a few years. And so with the S Pro Race, which comes in the 140, which we have here, and then also a 110 Flex, mm-hmm. uh, we're able to do that. So you have a 96 millimeter last mm-hmm. in the S Pro Race. Then you bump up to the Alpha, which you mentioned, which is a 98. S Pro Super Boa 100, mm-hmm. um, and then the S Pro HV 102 and above. And that's just on the Alpine side. Mm-hmm. So a lot of boots going on there, but back to the S Pro race. Um, essentially what we are trying to do here is get as close to creating uh, an actual race boot without being a race boot. Mm-hmm. And so we built it on a 96 millimeter last, um, but with we started with the outer part of the mold being the S Pro Alpha. Gotcha. And so we wanted to build up what the success that we saw with the S Pro Alpha as opposed to taking a World Cup race boot and dumbing it down. Mm. And so the difference on the production side of things is that we actually used a smaller plug on the inner of the mold, Mm -hmm. which allows us to put more plastic into it. I see. And so what you'll notice and what you'll feel when you step into this boat, into this boot is despite the 96 millimeter last is it feels super powerful and stable. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's actually more plastic here. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is, is that unlike most World Cup boots, which aren't heat moldable or custom shell process, whatever, Mm -hmm. is that because of how we built it, it is. It's just a longer process because there's more plastic there. Yeah, makes sense. Um, So yeah, we had the 140 in the S Pro race. It's um, fully dismantable. A boot fitter is kind of like, you know, best dream, if you will, like the ability to take everything apart. You have the race spine, which you can take out or remove if you want to, mm-hmm. um, like one of the screws, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, it has a World Cup liner in it, which is amazing. Um, and then you have like the 3D instep shell that mm-hmm. was on the S Pro Alpha mm-hmm. as well. And again, that stout 140 flex. So if you're talking about what consumer this is right for, um, it's somebody that is like, that needs and or wants the highest performing boot Mm -hmm. from a flex perspective, from a scheme perspective, and somebody who either needs or values that that really high performance tight fit that a 96 last can offer. Mm -hmm. Cool, well we're gonna move on from boots now to category I don't think you and I have talked about on one of these videos, but headwear and specifically helmets. Um, what, What did you bring us to highlight today? Yeah, I mean, on the protective side of our business, speaking specifically to helmets, Mm -hmm. um, we're super excited about the Brigade Index, um, which long story short, it's the first fully recyclable ski and snowboard helmet in the industry, period, hard stop. Mm -hmm. Um, And so the index idea or the index um, project is something that's been within the Solomon brand for quite a few years. Mm -hmm. Um, If people um, pay attention to the footwear space, uh, they've probably seen that we launched, uh, I think we're in version three almost of the index shoe, which Mm -hmm. is a recyclable shoe. Mm -hmm. Um, But that process, that project hadn't made it to the Alpine side of the business yet until the Brigade Index. And so when you talk about what we're trying to do as a brand, we're always trying to, again, like dig into how we're making products, how we can make them more sustainable, how we can like shorten and or improve that end of life process for mm-hmm. for an industry and for products that traditionally have a very long end of life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with the Brigade Index, the thing that makes it the first fully recyclable ski and snowboard helmet is that it's 90 per- 96% single origin material. Okay. Um, and so, if it's anything less than that, essentially that means that you can't just 
recycle it. You have to dismantle it. You have to do whatever mm -hmm. to like pull those other types of plastic out of there. Mm -hmm. And so it's 96% PP, mm -hmm. polypropylene. Mm -hmm. um, and that, again, that 96 percentage of that 96 percentage of, of PP allows you to, at the end of life, recycle the whole thing and mm -hmm. you don't have to dismantle it. Mm -hmm. um, we have preferred recycling partners lined up mm -hmm. in Europe and in North America. And when consumers will be able to buy this in North America in the fall, they'll be able to register it. They'll be able to go whenever they decide that it's they're done with that helmet. They'll be able to go to the product detail page, scan a QR code. We'll provide a shipping return label mm. that they can then send in the helmet mm -hmm. and we'll just recycle that. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about the index pr program and the project on the Alpine side, this is step one. Yeah. Um, but this is an awesome step one mm -hmm. as far as what we're trying to do with it. Step two is like, how can we incorporate what we're doing on the boot side or the ski side mm -hmm. um, into this helmet? And how can we say like, oh, it's end of life for this helmet. How can we take that, all of that PP from this helmet and incorporate it into other projects? Mm -hmm. But again, from a phase one perspective, we're super excited about this. $140 MSRP, which is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, two colorways. Uh, merino or not a merino liner a pp liner mm, yeah. um, but again it's still a very comfy liner the one thing that isn't pp is essentially this gotcha around the dial gotcha so. well yeah i think it helmets seem like a particularly good place to kind of start as you as you put it because as we talked about here at the summit um with solomon athlete drew peterson like there's this weird aspect of helmets where you you often have to you should get stop using one after a serious impact mm -hmm. um and yeah if, if it's not going straight to a landfill that'll feel a little bit better and um is a yeah it makes me excited to see what you guys come up with further with the index program for sure and i think you know i think it's it's a great first step for us and i think the important thing to keep in mind is that yes that's the story right it's it's a fully recyclable ski and snowboard helmet, but we don't skimp on the construction. Like we, in our helmets, we've always used EPS 4D is mm -hmm. what it's called, like in the in the normal brigade or in the Hus Prime, whatever. Um, we changed that and made it still a piece of this helmet, but it's now EPP 4D to make sure that it works with that recyclable story, that recyclable part of the project. And it still has all the same features as most helmets. You can still adjust the fit. Mm -hmm. um, you still have full coverage here. There's ventilation in the top. So we're not skimping on the features. The consumer is not going to notice a performance difference. It's just that end of life. Awesome. Well, I think we will wrap things up with a few key apparel pieces. Um, maybe you can start by telling us about the one that's behind you, that shell. For sure. I, I think from a context perspective, it's, it's good for people to understand like where Solomon's been mm -hmm. with apparel and like where we're trying to go. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, we've had some pretty iconic products. Um, you know, some people in, like some blister members will remember, you know, the, like the G suit mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you go back to the purple onesie that like Cody Townsend used to wear. Um, and so there's these iconic pieces, but then as a lot of companies do, we've, we've kind of went like this over mm -hmm. the years with apparel, like, you know, what, what markets we're trying to target, how that changes the fit, how that changes the features and the performance and what we're trying to do. Um, in the past two years, we've made a complete shift in how we're, how we're targeting apparel, how we're building apparel, the team that's building apparel. Mm -hmm. And that is manifested in the collection for Fall Winter 24. So in years past, we've always had like, in North America, we've had, you know, your Gore-Tex Pro three layer shell at the top, and then mm -hmm. there's been this gap. Mm -hmm. And then there's like an insulated, like resort jacket. Mm -hmm. um, and so what we're trying to do is set ourselves up where we have um, basically a step down, not only in price, but in, in performance and features that allows a wider variety of consumers to get into Salmon apparel. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we do have that top of the line Gore Pro 3 layer. Uh, it's called Moon Patrol, mm -hmm. Fall Winter 24. But behind me, what we're really excited about is the Absolute Jacket. Mm -hmm. uh, this jacket is available for men and women, four colors for each. Um, the cool thing about this is we're using our own proprietary technology and mm -hmm. fabric. It's called Advanced Skin Dry Plus. Um, it's still 20K, 20K waterproof, breathable. So essentially hitting that industry standard for protection, mm. performance. Uh, it's a softer feel. It's very light. Um, and then on the sustainability side of things, it's actually 100% recycled face fabric and backer. Mm. Um, it fills a really great price point and an important price point on the consumer side of things coming in at 
450 or 420, I believe actually, mm -hmm. 420 for the jacket. Um, and again, the fit is a free ride fit. It has all the features that you would expect, pass pocket, helmet compatible hood, underarm ventilation, um, really good fit and performance story mm -hmm. that, that we're really excited about for Fall Winter 24. Yeah, it seems like that gap that you mentioned that it's filling is a really exciting one. And um, yeah, am, am I correct in kind of assuming this is a bit of a do-it-all shell? Like it's not really super light and touring specific, not ultra, ultra burly. Or is, is that how you're thinking about it? For sure, 100%. And, and I mean, I think the people that have been using it at Blister Summit this week kind of speak to that versatility of the piece. Mm -hmm. We've had multiple people take it out on the tours mm -hmm. that they've been going on. It's easy to like roll up, throw in your pack. You don't feel like you're weighing down your pack. Um, but then again, it's got that softer feel to it. You don't feel like you're restricted in any of your normal skiing movements or normal touring movements. But at the same time, it offers all the protection and durability that you would want in a true resort free red jacket. Got it. Well, now I think we can close things out with one of the insulators in the line. What do we have on this table right here? What we have here is the Mountain Flex jacket. Mm -hmm. The Mountain Flex jacket represents a pretty significant step forward, especially in our mid-layer game mm -hmm. for Solomon. Um, it's a really quality mid-layer piece. It features um, active insulation. Okay. And that's kind of what sets it apart from anything else that we're doing and anything that a lot of other brands are doing. Mm -hmm. And while you can't see it here, um, when you're wearing this jacket and wearing it in the appropriate size, um, and you're doing normal skiing movements, whether it's touring, um, whether you're skiing in the resort, there's actually um, a significant, or not significant, but like cuts in mm -hmm. the insulation that essentially allow it to open and close and allow airflow in there. And so the idea with Mountain Flex is that it provides the protection that you need, it provides the warmth when you need it, mm -hmm. but then when also you need like a little bit more airflow, it also offers that. So it represents a piece that is just as applicable and just as useful when you're going backcountry touring. Mm -hmm. Like think about starting out at the trailhead, be bold, start cold, you know, be bold, start with a mountain flex, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and it also represents a piece that'll be perfect for like cold days at the resort, throw a shell over it. It's an awesome layering piece. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you once again for joining us at the summit, filling us in on all of these new products that Solomon has been working on. I know we are very excited to try a whole bunch of them for me starting tomorrow. So looking forward to that, but uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Sweet.